Dr. Cindy Davis Evans with The Cindy Davis Show. My guest today gained popularity in the 1970s and 80s with the legendary R&B group Switch. He is a singer, musician, and producer. Welcome back to the show, Philip Ingram. Hey, how are you? Good. You look all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> But don't you start. Don't you start. <laughs> Honey, you know how we do. You know it. You know it. But thank you for that compliment. Thank you. How have yes. you been? How you been, Phil, since the last you were here? Been okay? Well, yeah. No, I've been doing really good. Really, really busy, which is good. Yeah. You know, yeah. Some recording yeah. stuff. I think I was letting you know that Switch has some uh some shows and stuff coming up. But yes. Yeah, really yeah, busy. yeah. A lot of stuff going on since the last you were here. You were honored um, at your high school in um, Akron, Ohio. Yeah, that was interesting. I didn't even know they. I got this letter in February, yeah. and I'm like, Hall of Fame. I didn't know our high school had a Hall of Fame, <laughs> and it was nice because you know I, I just uh, you know I've lost three brothers. Um, oh, I only have goodness. two sisters left, and one lives in Akron, and my nieces. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I called her, I said, "Did you know about this?" She said, "Well, actually, yeah, I knew they had honored James," and she said, "Uh." She said, well, they honored James after he died, so accept it. I said, okay. So <laughs> so I got to spend some time with her. And yeah, it, it was nice and seeing, you know, a lot of people I went to school with. Um yeah. it wasn't at the high school, but you know, a lot of them was there. So, uh -huh. so it was nice. It was uh -huh. five of us from different uh different years that I graduated. And the guy told me it used to only be um sports figures. Mm -hmm. And then they you knew that they had these other people that had great careers, and so that's what happened. Yeah. Wow, that is that is very interesting. Well, yeah. congratulations on that. Well, thank also, you. Uh, Switch got uh, received the greatest R and B legend award. Who was that from? This um, there's a guy named Dennis Robeson in uh Cleveland. We've done yeah. some work with them. They've promoted some shows. He goes by Dennis Cash, and uh, they do this actually every year. They honor different um people, and we were the recipients this year. Along, yeah. we were like got the bigger awards, and then they. They had some uh, like some DJs and stuff, um, especially ones that was from the Cleveland area. And an interesting, um, you know, we we performed a little bit, but also Bunny. I didn't get a chance to talk to her. She performed uh, "Time Will Reveal" with a track. She sounded great. Because what happened is right when she went on, I heard her, and then we had to do an interview. Uh -huh. So I just went out in the audience and saw her for a little bit. But then, uh, but yeah, so that was nice because you know Bobby and Tommy, of course, were part of Switch. So yeah, they they. Um, their relatives would get the award. Wow. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's Thank you. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, well, speaking girl. Of, speaking of Tommy, um, what are your sentiments about the passing of Tommy DeBarge? Well, you know, we did a, uh, it's on my YouTube channel, Akili, the one that replaced Bobby. He did a really nice video of uh -huh. uh, Tommy, December yeah. 6, um, 2021. Uh -huh. We were be doing a show in L here in LA with a, uh -huh. uh, Elder Barge at the Globe Theater. And what yeah. happened was, uh, since Greg lives in Atlanta, James, our bass player, lives in Indiana, and Eddie lives in Vegas, you know, we rehearsed. And then yeah. we said, why don't we do a nice little thing for Tommy? And I don't know if you knew who Dion Estes had played with us. He used to be with Wham. And, oh, uh, I want to know that. Oh, yeah, he's phenomenal. Wow. It's nuts. They died 10 days apart from each other. Oh. So we did a thing called Remembering Tommy and Dion, and we had, we rented out the, um, the Canyon Club over here in Agora Hills. Really, it was just, it turned out really, really nice. We had uh, a lot of industry people and a lot of, um, you know, mm -hmm. our friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Didn't charge, they just had to pay for the food and stuff. But, uh, and so Akili did these really nice videos for both of them. Yeah. And so we did that and we did a little performance. But yeah, you know, Tommy was, um, a lot of people don't notice when, when we got together in December of 76, when mm -hmm. Greg and Jody came to California to shop a record deal um you know we were in mansfield ohio and i live in akron which is only about 70 something miles away and tommy was up in grand rapids yeah. but i was like why am i staying here you know i'm going to get some of my mom's cooking you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> right and so uh yeah so tommy said can i go back with you i'm like what and so i mean i said it ain't my house I have to call my parents they were like yeah, yeah. so he wow. stayed with us for three months and it's amazing um my parents treated him just like a, uh, like he was their own son. Uh -huh. He had him taking out the trash, shoveling snow. I mean, <laughs> it, he did. He didn't. He didn't like you know. He just said, "Yeah, Tommy, you you can come, but you're gonna have to work just like Philip will." Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Those those are those are some beautiful beautiful memories. Yep. Was it like what was it like growing up in Ohio though? Actually, it was nice. We you know it's as you know a lot of talent has come from um, Ohio, and even from Akron. Now I was one of the first ones. Me and Eddie Flewellen from Switch. Yeah. Or Hewitt, he's also from Akron. Yeah. So he hit with Shalimar and. You know, he was already out in California when I came and James was already out. And of course, and then James. But then you look after that. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. if you know Kevin Dorsey. Him mm-hmm. and I graduated together and he's done a lot in the music industry. But we're all from Akron. Then, of course, LeBron James, you know, it's like so there's a lot of talent that's out of Akron. Yeah. But Ohio, yeah, it, it's real green. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it just put it like this. It was nice to grow up. I couldn't do what I did. You know, all the stuff I've done in the industry, I could have not have done that in Ohio because it didn't offer that. That was one of the reasons we all moved to California. But yeah. no, it was great. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Sounds like a lot of fun. You hanging out, you know, who knew that all of y'all would get together and, and be this 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 uh, force to be reckoned with? I know. And it's, you know, I met Howard when I was 14. He was in a band called Life, spelled L-Y-F-E. And uh-huh. uh I was in a local band called Raw Soul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, Raw Soul. Doing, yeah, and James yeah. was in a band called Revelation Funk. And, you know, we were just doing top 40 stuff. Uh-huh. And James was the first one with California, then um, then Howard. But Switch was James the first one to hit. James, James Ingram, Ingram. yeah, my brother, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Brother. yeah Excuse me, what, girl. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. You know, most people don't know. They are so surprised. I know when I'm oh, just talking, goodness. but you're right. James, no, 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 no. My brother James to, Ingram. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to I just want to clarify that for the audience. No, yeah. I got you, girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, this show show. Just, no, no, this is your ahead. world. I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> that, and thank you for being here again. Thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it the last time. Oh yeah, we had lots of fun. We had lots of fun. Well, but you know I, how I, crazy you know how crazy you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, you the one, so you're yeah, right. You get me started. <laughs> well, that's good. Boys. <laughs> and you, recipro- you reciprocate. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. yeah, so go ahead and with your story. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just oh, no, it's okay. No, it's just like I said, when James came out, he was, uh, you know, he was doing stuff. And I told you the last time when mm-hmm. I told him I was coming to California because we're six, we were six years apart and yeah. I was, um, I was 18 and he was 24. So when I told him, you know, we were coming out and we have a deal, he's like, what do you mean you got a deal? Yeah. But, you know, James is actually the reason I'm in music. Uh, when I was eight, he was 14. He got in his first band. He said, you know, baby brother used to take me to rehearsals. And I was like, I was just like hooked because our whole family is musical or was, I should say. Yeah. But with only two that decided to uh, make a living out of it. But, yeah, all of us could sing or play, sing and or play an instrument. How many instruments do you play, by the way? Well, I started with uh, drums, so all the drums and the percussion. And then when I was 16, a lot of that, you know, um, Sly and Family Stone was doing all that funk. And I was like, oh, man, that stuff was so funky. I went to the pawn shop and got a bass and put on the records, not no CDs, you know, put on a record. You had to find that spot where you wanted it. And I'm like, I'm learning. And so I taught myself how to play bass. And then we had a piano in the house. And so... Me and my sister Janice, my brother James, my brother Henry. It was Henry's piano, my oldest brother. And we would literally, you know, okay, when, when are you going to get off the piano so I can play? You know, that type of thing. Oh. So, um, so, and then the piano, and then, of course, the singing. And that's why when um, we first got together and we did our, the, all the original members of Switch, mm-hmm. all of us could play multiple instruments and sing lead and background. Yeah. And that's how we got our name when we did our showcase with uh, Motown. Mm-hmm. Suzanne DePass was like, she said, I've never seen so much switching in my life when we did our showcase. And we didn't, you know, we just did it. It's like, you know, since you're going to be out front, I'll cover the keyboards. OK, you know, we you know, it wasn't like we were trying. That's just what we did. And it was like, huh. And so that's how the name came about. Wow. So interesting. That yeah. Is stuck. Yeah. I, know it's, it's, I have to add this because it's kind of funny. Akili, the one who sings with us now, you know, yeah. since Bobby's been gone. Um it's so funny because this this sounds funny. He only sings, and he's with us, who we still all play different instruments and stuff. So, like, if I'm on the keyboards, he's out. But if I'm out singing by myself, he's like, "Man, what am I gonna do?" Yeah. Oh, wow. So he doesn't play any <laughs> instruments. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's funny. It's like, hey man, well, sit back and sing background. You know. 
Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so who are your favorite artists? I, I heard that Stevie Wonder is, and who else? Actually, growing up, I'm going to tell you, um, um, I'll start with the singers. Stevie Wonder and Donnie Hathaway. People say, where'd you learn to sing? I went to the school of Stevie Wonder and Donnie Hathaway. Matter of fact, wow. when Music of My Mind came out, I was just like, this is ridiculous. Because, you know, he had his, my sherry, you know, had that stuff, which yeah. was nice. But when he did Music of My Mind, Mary Wants to Be a Superwoman. And it was yeah. like, man. And then his next album, Talking Book, you know, yeah. with Superstition, You and I. I mean, it's just gorgeous songs. And of course, Donnie Hathaway's Live, that album, I seriously, I wore it out. To where you know back when the needles would it would skip and pop and yeah. and so I was happy when it came out on CD again because it was like oh man and I still play that it's just yeah. you know so because you know you you want singers um, somebody that moves you but bands honestly uh you know back back then in the 70s Earth and Fire Tower Power they yeah. were some of my favorite bands because I was in a band you know what I mean I'm, I still am but yeah. but singers was Stevie and Donnie I mean I loved Marvin Gaye and, but I'm saying Stevie and Donnie had the most influence on me. And then, of course, bands, Tower Power, Earth, Wind, and Fire, they were just killing. And then, you know, the Commodores were coming up, and then we got signed to the same label right around the time they had done their fifth album with Easy on it. Yeah. And they started doing all those ballads. But, uh, and then we, you know, we all became friends. But yeah. Wow. 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 How did you and uh, Sherry Payne? uh end up doing a duet? You know, I had her on the show a couple of times. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Wayne, you know Wayne Henderson from from the Jazz Crusaders. Yeah, I heard of Wayne. Um, when years ago he had he had just did a whole bunch of production stuff. Matter of fact, he was responsible for uh, you know Ronnie Laws. Remember, always there. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And he was doing all these artists, and so Sherry Payne and Frida were working with Wayne, and mm -hmm. so um, we did a thing. <laughs> Me, Donnie Osmond. Frida yeah. Payne and Sherry Payne. Yeah. It's, you pull it up on YouTube. It was a the morning wow. show. We did a um I wrote a song. It was a it was a Saint No, no, I'm sorry. It was a I'm sorry, LA Street scene. And we got me and Wayne and uh Randy Henderson wrote the theme song for the LA Street scene. Mm -hmm. But me, Donnie Osmond, Sherry, and uh Frida, we did that uh together. And so as you pull up on YouTube, it's like I think it's like 1985. But okay. after that, Sherry was doing an album and then they wanted us to uh, do a duet. So me and her did two duets on her album. Wow. One I co-wrote and one I wrote by myself. But yeah, Sherry and I, we've, we've stayed in touch. Um, yeah, I see them from time to time. But yeah, we did quite a bit together. Not wow. saying background on her album. But yeah, Wayne Henderson is the one that that's how I met them, her and Frida. That's amazing. Man, you and Donnie and Donnie Osmond. And yeah, and Donnie Osmond, wow, you have worked with some of everybody. I <laughs> told you that girl. I said, see, it's, it's funny. Everybody. <laughs> no, see, that's oh. what's happening. Everybody know me for Switch, but then when they start, because people don't read credits, that's really what bottom line. You oh, know, that's true. That's when true. the movie ends, what do you do? You get up and leave, and these yeah. names are going up, you know, and it's like, but then when I tell people, they're like, are you kidding me? It's like, well, yeah, but here's what happened in 1982. Because mm -hmm. we were signed from 77 to 82. We lost our record deal, right? And that's, that's you know, um, and Motown had already signed DeBarge, but they shelved them. I don't know if you ever heard their first album. They did a song um, called What's Your Name? Gorgeous song. I loved it. But mm -hmm. it didn't do nothing because Motown didn't, because Switch was so hot at the time. Yeah. But then when we were, when Bobby, uh, you know, decided to leave. Yeah. So when we left in 82, DeBarge, the name was already known from Switch. You know, Bobby and Tommy sound very similar. And when all this love came out, people were actually calling me saying, man, I love your new record. I'm like, no, that's that's Bobby's them younger brother. He's like, are you kidding? Wow. At that time. So it was kind of like hard to tell the difference. But then, you know, DeBarge developed their own sound. And Tommy was Tommy was actually uh, playing with them. And then um, during that time, mm -hmm. Switch went to total experience. I left because... It was just so many issues that had come up and yeah. switched it a thing with it. They picked up a couple of other people, but Eddie, Greg and Jody. And I went with uh, Quest Records, me and a guy named Zane Giles. And um, from that, you know, we did like a dual thing under the name of Deco. And it uh -huh. wasn't real popular here in the United States, but it's funny. Y'all you know, did some shows and stuff with, um, I worked with Sheen East for like 17 years. Yeah. And I'd be in Japan and 
you know, some people would come up with Switch albums for me to sign, but these people start coming up with these Deco CDs. I'm like, really? Wow. Yeah. And then when I was on Facebook, people would hit me up from other countries about Deco. I'm like, because it didn't do well here, but it did very well over there. That's and amazing. So, uh, so after that, I started doing um, started doing uh, commercials. It was actually Ed Eckstein was working mm -hmm. with Quincy Jones. Yeah. He recommended me for a commercial. And I started doing these commercials. And then from there, a lot of session singing with different artists and then working with. Uh, so when you work with a producer that's really hot, they mm -hmm. want the same sound. So I did a lot of work with um, Walter Afanasiev as a producer. I was his vocal um, contractor. Peter Wolf, I was his vocal contractor. That's mm -hmm. how I worked with goo gobs of people. Then I started doing movies. And so there was for years, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't doing any live performances. I was getting the residuals and royalties from movies. And, and I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, man, those those royalties must be really nice. Um, uh, what do you think? I mean, you've even did uh, movie credits to the original Little Mermaid, which is redone. And yes, then, just recently, yeah. Recently released again. You did My Best Friend's Wedding. Now, you know, I'm in My Best Friend's Wedding. Yeah, you, it's, you're actually singing in. Yes. So, movie. okay, Little Mermaid, obviously, it's a cartoon, so you don't see me, you hear me. Yeah. But My Best Friend's Wedding, I'm the wedding singer on camera at the end of the film, singing I Say a Little Prayer for You. And when people go, they go back and watch, they like, are you kidding me? That's what I mean. It was... <laughs> But yeah, I got to do the on camera. Uh, I was a wedding singer. And some people were like, isn't that guy from Switch? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was doing a lot, a lot of that. See again, working with different people. And um, mm -hmm. but yeah, Little Mermaid, though, it was interesting. It was uh we did the opening song, Mysterious Fathoms Below, Under the Sea, and Kiss the Girl, you know, singing background. Uh -huh. and, it, and when I was doing Kiss the Girl, it was interesting. They said, Philip, I want you to do some uh ad libs. And I'm like, this is like 1984. I said some ad libs on a cartoon. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. And so if you listen to the end of Kiss the Girl, they, you know, going, why don't you kiss? You hear all this, go on and kiss the girl, go. It's like, they were like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. But then I learned something else <laughs> that <laughs> let's say me, you, and another singer, we're in a group. So that's group. But then if you sing a step out, yeah, it's like a solo. So you get more money. You get that plus. So then I was like, oh, because that was you know like one of the first movies I did. I'm like, OK. So when they asked me to do some step outs, I'm like, no problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I still get paid a Little Mermaid. That's you know, with, with Disney Plus, as, as long as they re-release it or whatever. Uh -huh. And now with the new film. Yeah, it'll it'll spark, you know, the original, that type of thing. Yeah, man, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. It you has been. Get the background credits too. The um, Anita Baker, no one in the world. Yep, that was a uh, me and a uh, <laughs> that that demo. I actually sang the demo for that song for the songwriters, oh, Kenny Hirsch and, and Marty. Mm -hmm. And so they said, "Can you do the background?" So I did the background arrangements on that, and it was me, Daryl Fantasy, and Lynn Davis. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so we got to do that. But yeah, this that's not said. I was doing a lot. Doing it when so basically, I left Switch in '82. Did another record with Zane Giles called on Quiz, uh, Quincy's label with Deco. Toured, I did the do tour, but then after that, it was commercials, movies, records for years literally years. Wow, what was it like working with Quincy Jones though? Did you work directly with him? Oh, yeah, since uh, uh when James first did um, Just Once, you know, um, the dude album. Mm -hmm. The first time I met Quincy, we did uh, Ernie Watts. And yeah. you, remember, um, you remember Donna Summers? She had this record called Finger on the Trigger. Yeah. A lot of people think that's ladies. That's me and Phil Perry and James singing background. <laughs> <laughs> finger, that's the highest record I've ever oh. done. Oh, my goodness. Are you serious? Yeah. So Quincy, I mean, James, when they were doing the Dude Tour, which was in 82, James said, hey, man, you want to do background? So me, Phil Perry. and um. Edie Lehman, we did backgrounds for that dude tour. And then after that, I started working with Quincy on a lot of stuff. But yeah. no, he's, he was, I'll say this, he was like a nice, like a grandfather. I mean, no ego, no nothing, just really? great to work. Oh, yeah, he's. I've heard that about him, Bo. He is so easy to work with. I mean, yeah. you just love, that's why he's loved by everybody. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot from working with him, seriously. What did you learn from him? Just name one or two things. 
Well, you know what? Look, look well, we, tell you what, we played in New Orleans, right? We're at the, uh, um, what's that big theater? I'm not theater, arena. Because oh, it was a, oh, it was oh, a, the book, it's a super fast the theater. Mercedes. No, it was Mercedes. a Superdome. Oh, yeah. Superdome but, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, so Mercedes. Okay. Anyway, we, you know, there's this famous uh, seafood restaurant called Broussard's. And so after the show, we thought we were going, I mean, we went to Broussard's, but we thought, you know, just like customers, no, they, they closed the restaurant and it was Quincy's entourage that came in. And I was like, so I saw then that he had developed all these relationships over the years. So when he yeah. came to town, people treated him. There's, you know, we were up in Detroit, similar mm -hmm. stuff would happen. I mean, everybody just loved him. Wow. I was like, man, so in other words, don't, you know, don't be all caught up in what you've accomplished. See, uh, the man, Quincy Jones, was loved and respected regardless mm -hmm. of his music. And I'll say that was one of the biggest things. I was like, that's, that's like when I grew up. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone that you would like to work with on your bucket list? Just, just, I'm just Cindy, Cindy, Cindy I'm serious. I have worked with, I mean, it, I work with, I mean, I'm telling you, I've worked with so many people, which is, which is good. And you know what's, what's happened? Um, we've always made it a pleasant experience. Like, you know, like sometimes I'm doing these uh, schools, like with music and I ask them, I said, what do you think the difference is being confident and cocky? Right. Yeah. And they'd give me an answer and I'd say, very good. And I'll say, which one do you think is going to give you longevity? Right. Because ah. you can sing, you have to have confidence in yourself. But if you're cocky after a while, some people don't want to work with you. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And I got a bunch of stories of cocky people that missed out on a lot of opportunities just because it's like, yeah, I love them, but no, yeah. I can't work with that, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I've, I've literally worked with, I mean, the whole gamut. Matter of fact, okay. one day I got a call and uh, <laughs> this, uh, it was funny. Um, they asked me that I wanted to do the country music awards. I said, are you kidding me? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so, but it was, it was Willie Nelson and um, mm -hmm. Leanne, Leanne Womack. They had that song called Mendocino County Line. So that's mm -hmm. what I mean. I'm like, I'm work with Will, uh, Willie Nelson singing yeah. background. And we also did the tonight show together. So how would, you know, how would this R and B singer end up with a country singer like Willie Nelson? Right, right. And that's why if you don't have no egos and you just music is music. And so a lot of jazz artists, a lot of. Yeah, I've done the whole gamut. I even, I even worked with David, Hass David Hasselhoff. He did a yeah. record in Germany. I think <laughs> <laughs> Not, oh there's really goodness. nobody on my bucket list. I'm serious. <laughs> wow. 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 Have you ever wanted to work with Sting? Sting? No, I mean, you know what? It's like. I, I love all these guys, but, you know, I know that you're not going to work with everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, I've worked with Toto quite a bit, Steve uh -huh. Lukather and David Page and them, you know. And then, you know, the way I actually met Sheena Easton was uh, working with Michael McDonald. And he had mentioned me to her. And she told me one day, and I didn't know that. So, you know, but yeah, I love Sting. But, you know, sometimes your paths don't cross. Like, I, I would have never thought... Um, I, th I think after James did a, uh, if you look, if you look up the old Solid Gold episode of James and Michael doing Yamo Be There. Yeah. I'm playing bass and singing background. <laughs> <laughs> On that Solid Gold, we watched it the other day. I was showing oh, my really? Bass. Yeah. Wow. On YouTube. That's what I mean. That's, so, is, yeah. yeah <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. Everybody knows Switch, but all this other stuff. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's that's why we have these shows is to give people some information about your background and all that kind of stuff. So let me ask you this then, who was one of your favorite to work with? I, I, I hands down, Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones, yeah. I, you know, a couple of things I learned from being around Barry Gordy and Quincy Jones. I was, actually, when we did that um, Greatest R&B mm -hmm. Awards, we did a uh, a panel at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. And one of the things I said, what I learned about from working with Barry Gordy and Quincy Jones, and the reason they're so successful Mm -hmm. They would hire the people they needed, but they knew how to get out of their way, you know, yeah. instead of trying to control everything. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, they would hire people. And that's why you got these great records. So like when you hear Rock With You, you know, by uh, um, Michael Jackson, right, yes. yeah. written by Rod Temperton. Yeah. But Quincy didn't tell John Robinson, the drummer, that did it back, right? It just do your thing. 
Ah. That's John, I mean, came up with that. And then when you hear Lewis on Little, you know, that's he would he would work with people. That's why he hired them, let them do their thing. And then he, you know, even when we did live stuff, you know, he let us do our thing. And so he you hire the best and you get out the way. And I said, wow. So I learned a lot working with them. And um, because some people try to control every little aspect of everything, Mm -hmm. and then you end up with a mess. So So but yeah, can you imagine Quincy saying, you know, your opening drum lick, I need it to be. No, that was JR. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know what? That is that is wonderful to be able to work with someone who let you have your own free range. That way you can be creative. Exactly. And your real self come out rather than being controlled. So, yeah, I, th- I think it, that's wonderful. Yeah. So that's honestly, I also have to say um, him because little stuff like that, because, you know, I was switching already done what they had done. But I was like, um, it was, you know. Even though Switch was huge r and B, I I mean, Quince was like a whole nother level of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, so I started getting around those people. And I'm like, wow, man, this is this is a whole nother level. I mean, you know, yeah. that dude album, I don't know if you remember, it was nominated for 12 Grammys. Yes. Yes, I do remember. Yeah. I do remember. Wow. And he was doing the, uh, during that time period when we were doing that dude tour, he was working on the Thriller album. Yeah. So, wow. That. He is, he is, he's one of the best. He really oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm toss out, I'm going to toss out a year. You tell me what you were doing at that time. Okay. 1979. Well, 79 was Switch. I was, obviously, we were still doing, um because our first album had come out in 78, you know, They'll Never Be, um yeah. Switch 1, and then Switch 2 was 79. That's when I Call Your Name and Best Beat in Town, that album came out. So we were just starting to do like, you know, different TV shows and stuff. We, Quincy, I mean, not Quincy, Barry was um, trying to market us like he did to Jackson 5, yeah. where he held us off not doing a lot of live stuff and then, you know, get you to a certain point, then release you. And that's what, how he did to Jackson 5. But yeah. um, at that time, we, had, we hadn't even performed live. We had just done TV shows, mm-hmm. but we had done no tours, what I meant to say. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I was still with Switch at that time. Yeah. Uh, anything stick out for you for 1987? 87. Um, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think. Oh, okay. Throw out another year? Wait a minute. I'm just, she got it. Because, see, again, I've, I've done so much. You know what I mean? It just started. They just it, kept it, going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why did you look up some of those years when these songs came out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it don't have to be about music. It can be, uh, you know, whatever uh, that uh, sticks out in your mind. Well, one thing I remember, um, my buddies, uh, it was Daryl Fantasy. Like I said, him and I sang together on Anita Baker, Kevin Dorsey. You know, we grew up together. And um, Dorian Holly, they were actually just starting to work with uh, Michael doing that tour and, and, and Saida Garrett and we all had done sessions and stuff together. So I remember they were going on the road. It was a uh, August of 87 yeah. and I was doing, you know, like I said, a lot of stuff in town, but I do remember that cause that was when, you know, Michael, cause this was after thriller and re- he had done some stuff with the Jacksons, but from that point on his tours are just mainly by himself. Yeah. So that kind of sticks in my mind, but uh, yeah, Saida, Daryl, Kevin and Dorian. 1999. 99 Prince. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to party like it's 1999. <laughs> right? Yep. Man. No. Go ahead. Um, Nothing. Nothing there. No, you know, like, seriously, because the, um, like I said, doing these songs, you don't, a lot of times you don't remember when they came out and stuff. Like I, um, Remember that I'm everything I am because you love me, right? Mm-hmm. So I just remember that was a. Uh, I remember it was in January, but I don't remember the year. You know that was with David Foster, and I did a lot of stuff with him too over the years. But um, you know he, he produced it, but uh, uh, Diane Warren wrote it, and see I used to do a lot of stuff with Diane Warren, you know, singing demos and stuff. So yeah, you know what I mean, but I don't remember the year that came out, but. Yeah, that was in. Then that ended up in that movie, Up Close and Personal. So then you get the record and the movie. Kind of like I was telling you with the uh, 
King of Wishful Thinking. Yeah. You know, that was, we did a Go West record, but then that song ended up in Pretty Woman. You know what I mean? So it's like, so you get paid twice. Yeah. Wow. So, that's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> what does a day look like for you, Phil? I mean, you're always so busy. So let's actually just, not all the time. Back, back, back then, walk us through a day. Well, back, I'll say, okay, back then, it would be um, depending how many sessions. Because sometimes we would do like, um, if you're doing an album, as an, let's say, uh, okay, like when we did, um, uh, okay, we did Kenny G's record, right? It's me, Phil Perry, Jim Gilstrap. And so when we're doing that, they'll block out, you know, so many days, depending on how many songs you're going to do. But usually if you do like the whole album, you can do like about three songs in um, in a day, you know, background. And then you come back the next day. But, but then sometimes there were times where I had a commercial, you know what I mean? And there may be a record. Oh, Some, yeah. Back then when a whole lot was happening, be, yeah. actually before the Screen Actors Guild strike of 2000, yeah. we were all doing a whole lot more work back then because you could do a like a commercial and even be on film later in the afternoon. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now it's 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 very, you know, we can actually do stuff from home. Sometimes someone will send me some files to do some stuff from home. Then I send it back. So, yeah, yeah things have changed. But since yeah. since the strike of 20, uh, 2000, Screen Actors Guild, yeah. it's changed yeah. significantly. Wow. Wow. So tell us um, about where Switch is playing. You are, are still touring. You're still doing venues, playing venues. Yeah. And who's, who's in your group now? Who's in well, Switch now? The originals are Greg Williams, who started and founded the group, myself and Eddie Fluellen. Mm -hmm. Now, our guitar player, his name is Michael McGlory. He was Jermaine Jackson's guitar player. But all this, you know, when you first hear They'll Never Be, what's the first thing you hear? Daryl, Daryl, do, do, do. Guitar. That was Michael McGlory. Ah. He also played on I Call Your Name on I Want to Be Closer on Best. So even though he wasn't a member of the band, he played on all of our hits. So. He's with us. It's like an original member. Then we picked up Akili Nixon. Of course, you know, you mentioned Tommy DeBarge died. And when Tommy died, we had a guy named James Strong. Then James had moved to Indiana. Mm -hmm. And that's when Dion Estes was working with us. Like I said, he worked with Wham, George Michael. Yeah. And then I told you they died 10, 10 months apart. James Strong is now back with us. And uh, now we have um, Tafir Hazy, who also plays with LTD. He's our drummer. And... Um, I think that's it. Yeah. 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 So where are y'all playing that now? So on June 29th, we're going to be here here at Hollywood Park in L.A. Um, yeah. And then um, it's June. I'm sorry. Yeah. July 22nd. We'll be up at Yoshi's in Oakland. We have two shows there. Yeah. And then we're doing. Do you know about those little city, uh, those city wineries they have around the country? Uh, in uh, uh, Chicago, Philly and Atlanta. Well, they got them there. Plus, they have them in Nashville and Birmingham, and they have about nine. Yeah, but yeah we will be doing Chicago, Atlanta, and um, what's the other one you mentioned? Atlanta, uh, Philly. Yes, Philly, right. That's August 23rd, 24th, and 26th. But wow. then Greg said they're trying to fill in the 25th, either in Birmingham or Nashville. Awesome. But we did it last year. We did just Atlanta last year, and it went over so well. They've been trying to work it out for us to come back, and so now here it's finally happening. So... We have that coming up in August. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, now, what city are you in? I'm in Houston. Oh, okay. I got to come to Houston, Texas. Yeah. We we actually remember you had hooked me up with somebody. Yeah. And uh, we I were going back and forth and I don't know what happened. It never worked out, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. You reached out to me for that. And uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to. Trying to hook you up, but you know, I'm sorry that didn't work out for you. <laughs> no, and it still may. You know, sometimes that happens. Yeah. But uh, no, he was really, he was really nice. But yeah. So yeah, uh, girl, if I'm ever close, you know, you're gonna be front row seat. All right, all right, that's right. Get us some, get us some tickets, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we haven't played here in, in years. Seriously. Really? Yeah. 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 That'd be nice. That would be. Do y'all have any uh, new recordings coming up or are you working on any new music? Any new we did a couple music? of things and um, what's happening, we had recorded a couple of things. One song was called I Love You More and that was kind of like like a little pre-launch and yeah. now there's some people interested in re-putting that out and um, 
it's another song that uh um Akili and I done but other than that it's only we've only done like two things so if so it would be like a little small EP something that we probably use at our shows or something like that sweet sweet yeah okay, now this is now this is a serious question now gonna... yeah right yeah. when have you ever got serious with me <laughs> <laughs> oh and next time you have Sherry you got to tell her yeah I I will I tell her, yeah, I will. Yeah, she's been on here a couple of times. We've had some fun together. We did a we did a Christmas show and um, uh, you know, and then we just we kind of sang together. They say, okay, now you want to do supremes, we deem you. I say, Yay, I always want to be a supreme. So uh -oh, so wait a minute, wait a minute. You sang? Oh yeah, I sang. Honey, <laughs> you just now telling me that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so can I hear a little bit? Oh, oh, okay. Now there you go. Put me on the spot. Hey, if you can sing, you can okay. sing, right? Come on with it then. Let's say, mm. since you've been away, I've been down and lonely. Since you've been away, I've been thinking of you. Sing, girl. Try to understand the reason you left me what were you going through very good girl so you you've thank been you. holding out on thank me you. thank you you've been holding out on me <laughs> <laughs> well thank you thank you for that yes. now i want to know what do you want to be remembered by you know what it's how it's do funny. you want to be remembered somebody asked me that and it's like um this is interesting because for me, it's it's definitely not the music, because music is um, music is what I do. You know what I mean? But I, it's like I was telling somebody. I said I've never let the music define who I am, because if you take that away, then who is Philip Ingram, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want to be remembered by, I've always, even when I was little, I said watch these shows and see these jerks. I said. I like to be a positive influence in people's lives. And so even that more so than the singing, because if the singing overrides you as a person, something's wrong. You know, man, he could sing, but man, he was such a, he was a jerk. <laughs> but yeah. if it's like, man, he could sing, but man, it's one of the nicest, you know, one of the nicest people I've ever, there you go. It's, it's just a blessing. But see, that's, that's. That's what I'm saying. It's That's like right. it's like we first met, like we've been friends for years. I, I absolutely, absolutely, and and we know, stay in touch, and we're friends now. And see, there yeah, you go. but it's, it's it's wonderful when the feeling is mutual. Yeah, right. that's a blessing. That's a blessing, and thank you for that. Thank you for that. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you, Philip, for being here and sharing your story and just being who you are. So um, let me go ahead. I guess we'll go ahead and close this out for now. I want to thank you for watching the Cindy Davis Show. Until next time, God bless.